you're likely thinking that this has to be clickbait, or Steve's lost his damn mind. From the redshifting of celestial bodies, to the cosmic microwave background, to Einstein's general relativity, the Big Bang Theory has an enormous amount of evidence in its favour. And indeed, if you're thinking this, you're absolutely right to be sceptical. But as I'm about to make clear, the conviction that the universe came from nothing is not justified. This is the Big Bang debunked. A few days ago, I went to London to debate Blake Jonta on the award-winning Unbelievable show, which is hosted by the wonderful Justin Brierley. The argument we debated was the Kalam cosmological argument, and one of our biggest disagreements revolved around what exactly the Big Bang is, and more importantly, what we can fairly conclude from the evidence we have. Blake believes, along with most theologians and laypeople, and indeed many philosophers and not-so-savvy documentary writers, that we now know with certainty that the universe came into existence from nothing. Creatio ex nihilo. It turns out that the whole universe in fact originated about 14 billion years ago in an event we've all come to know as the Big Bang. We can deduce that a very long time ago, the universe simply burst into existence. An event called the Big Bang. The universe is not eternal in the past, but had an absolute beginning a finite time ago. This is our infant universe. Everything that will ever exist, everything that will ever happen, all begins here. The Big Bang Theory states that the universe began as a hot and infinitely dense point. And it is from this explosion, this bang, that all matter, energy, space, and time were created. While I, and the majority of physicists, and especially astrophysicists, completely disagree, it might be the case that the universe began to exist at the Big Bang, but we certainly don't have sufficient reason to assert that we know that it did. When we speak of the Big Bang, we often have an image of a kind of cosmic explosion that created our universe and set space rushing outward. But there's a little secret. The Big Bang leaves out something pretty important. The bang. It tells us how the universe evolved after the bang, but gives us no insight into what would have powered the bang itself. But the fact is, we are still totally clueless about what happened before the universe started to expand. We use the phrase, the Big Bang, to refer to that earliest moment of the history of the universe where we don't understand what is going on. It's a placeholder for our lack of understanding. And hence, that's the reason for this video. If you're currently convinced that the universe came into existence from absolutely nothing, then I hope that within the next few minutes I shatter your conviction. Because I care about you. To do so, let's look at the most compelling evidence. In 1912, Vesto Slipher used a spectrograph to analyse the wavelength of celestial objects, and found that while some are blue shifting, or travelling towards us, such as the Andromeda Galaxy, which was at the time known as the Andromeda Nebula, most are red shifting, or travelling away from us. Then in 1916, Albert Einstein developed his theory of general relativity, which when taken to its conclusion predicts that upon a time the observable universe had zero volume and infinite density, much to Einstein's dismay. In fact, he outright rejected this conclusion, and until later discoveries assumed a cosmological constant. Eleven years later, in 1927, based primarily on Einstein's equations, Georges Lemaitre proposed an expanding model of the universe, which he called the Cosmic Egg, but the theory later received the pejorative title The Big Bang from Fred Hoyle. During the same time, Edward Hubble, with the aid of technological advancements, demonstrated that what Slipher and the world thought were nebulae are actually entire galaxies, and thus he made our vision of the universe much, much bigger. And then in 1929, Hubble published and demonstrated what is now known as Hubble's Law, which states that celestial bodies rushing away from us are doing so at a speed directly proportionate to their distance, and so a galaxy that is twice as far away as another is proceeding twice as fast, while a galaxy that's ten times as far away is proceeding ten times as fast, etc. And thus, he proved that the universe is expanding. And yes, his discovery caused Einstein to abandon his cosmological constant. 
Moving on, in 1932, Karl Jansky, while investigating static interference with shortwave transatlantic voice transmissions, accidentally discovered radiation emanating from the centre of the Milky Way, indicating that everything within the Milky Way once coalesced. And then some 30 years later, in 1963, Robert Dickey, inspired by Jansky, theorised that if galaxies emanated radiation, and almost all galaxies are moving away from each other, then perhaps the universe itself is emanating radiation. A prediction that was proven a year later by Arno Penzias and Robert Wilson. Now the last piece of evidence that needs mentioning is the bored goof for Lincoln theorem, which states that almost all inflationary models of the universe will reach a boundary in the past. And the reason this needs mentioning is because theists like Blake and William Lane Craig have claimed it to be the creme de la creme proof that the universe was created from nothing. The need for a beginning has been further solidified by the bored goof for Lincoln theorem, which is so modest in its assumptions that its conclusion holds regardless of how you describe the earliest phase of the universe before Planck time. I can also uh, hold, excuse me, I can also hold, uh, excuse me, it can also hold despite completely different physics within a multiverse. The bored guth vilenkin theorem is independent of any physical description of that early beginning of the universe. Their theorem implies that even if the universe is just part of a wider multiverse of many universes, even then the multiverse itself must have an absolute beginning. But this simply isn't true, and here's Alex Goof himself saying as much in response to a question from Robert Lawrence Kuhn. What happened before? How, how did inflation start? How did you, whether it was a 10 to the minus 39th the second, but you know, what happened before that? Right. And uh, right. where are we? <laughs> where are we? Well, we still certainly don't know the answer to that question. And inflation, in fact, makes it a particularly difficult question to, to answer uh, because the gigantic expansion associated with inflation, uh, really from an observational point of view, essentially completely erases any evidence of what came before. Now, of course, I've been very terse in explaining these discoveries and their specific ramifications, and so I recommend that you learn more about them at another time. But notice that while they all scream that the observable universe once coalesced into a minuscule hot dense state, they do not scream that absolutely everything emerged from absolutely nothing. Sure, they fit such a hypothesis, but, well, let me approach this with an analogy. Consider any of all the explosions we've ever seen, such as this one. If we existed on a tiny fragment of this exploded bomb, and were able to deduce by, say, the redshifting of nearby fragments, that upon a time every fragment once coalesced into a hot, dense state, would we be justified in asserting that we know that the singularity emerged from absolutely nothing? Of course not. We'd have to say, we don't know what happened during the earliest state. Now this analogy isn't perfect, I appreciate that, as the fundamental forces themselves evidently merge at the Big Bang. But I think it sufficiently gets my point across, and that's the primary and perhaps only point I want to convey. The answer to the question, did the universe begin to exist, is not yes. The whole universe in fact originated about 14 billion years ago. The universe is not eternal in the past, but had an absolute beginning a finite time ago. It's we don't know. We are still totally clueless about what happened before the universe started to expand. It's a placeholder for our lack of understanding. And so, what this already collapses into is an equivocation fallacy. There are two prominent concepts of the Big Bang, one that posits that the universe expanded from an extremely hot and dense state, which I'll hereon refer to as the expanding model, and another that posits that absolutely everything emerged from absolutely nothing, which I'll hereon refer to as the Nihilo model. Now, as it currently stands, that is, with all of the scientific knowledge that we've acquired, we are justified in saying that the expanding model is almost certainly true, but we are not justified in asserting that the Nihilo model is true. In fact, while we have hypotheses and theories that predict violations of the law of conservation of energy, we've never seen such a violation. And so, as it stands, everything is creatio ex materia. Everything is rearrangement of already existing matter. Anyhow, as always, thank you kindly for the view, and an extra special thank you to my wonderful patrons and those of you who have donated via PayPal. You are the fuel to this channel's Big Bang.
the understanding that there's a beginning is based on general relativity, and we know general relativity is not right. The reason we know it's not right is because, for one thing, it predicts a singularity. It predicts that things are infinite, and we don't think that that can be true. Also, general relativity is not compatible with quantum mechanics, which we do think is right. So basically, we have a prediction that the universe began based on a theory we have no right to trust. 